I made a decision to go to Washington so I could attend the We the People Foundation press conference. They were going to serve a class action lawsuit on the IRS signed by over 3,000 people because the IRS has refused to show the law that makes Americans liable to file a 1040 or to pay an income tax on their labor. I was very curious as to why the IRS refused to show the law, as it seems such a simple thing to do. Yet I was skeptical about the Foundation's claims. There had to be a law, right? I mean, we've all been told over and over and over again that we had to pay income taxes. No answers! No taxes! No answers! Most people believe that the income tax system is legal and that the revenue from the tax is used in the public interest. However, there is a substantial, conclusive body of evidence that proves that our income tax system represents the most pernicious form of tyranny. It is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated by government against the working men and women of America. American citizens, along with the Foundation, have been asking the IRS to specifically provide them with the, the underlying legal foundation upon which they administer and enforce the personal income tax laws in our country. At the national level, when people would attempt to contact somebody of a much higher authority, say the, cons uh, the commissioner, same kind of thing. Uh, they, wouldn't get, they would get answers that were, in effect, non-answers. There are a group of people standing outside today who uh, assert that no law requires you to pay taxes and that you will not answer their petition to the government uh, as to whether they're required to pay taxes. Are they required to pay taxes? I've been paying my taxes ever since I had my first job and I think it, it's, a, it's a fundamental uh, construct of our nation that, that those of us who um, expect and demand the services from our government that the government provides, be they the protection of our country through the military, or be they uh, the education of our children, or be they the protection of our environment, that, that we must pay for those services. So yes, I think there is a fundamental obligation and uh, that, that it's an understood and well accepted one. Joe Bannister and I had a meeting in the White House with President Clinton's economic advisor, Jason Furman. He accepted the remonstrance for the President. On June 2nd, I called and spoke with him. His words were, we have decided that the issue of the legality of the income tax is not a high priority matter for the White House, and we will not be participating in any conference on the subject. I decided not to eat until my death or until the government agreed to send their experts to meet with the experts from the tax honesty movement. And with the help of Congressman Bartlett, a deal was made. I'm very pleased that through these uh, several trying weeks and now months, that we have secured the uh, agreement of the IRS and the Justice Department because some of the questions are beyond the purview of IRS, that they will both attend a uh, public symposium where these issues can be formally uh, addressed. Last Thanksgiving, DOJ and IRS notified Congressman Bartlett that they would not participate. Congressman Bartlett then waited until late January, he informed me that he would not be participating. Why do you think you've been able to get away with not paying or filing your income taxes for so long? Well, first of all, I've not gotten away with anything. I'm not hiding from anyone. I'm simply asking the IRS to show me the laws that apparently require me to do these things, and they are suspiciously uh, reticent to answer questions from me and of course there are millions of other people 
uh, many other organizations who have attempted to get answers. They act very suspiciously when asked to simply sit down at the table with the American people and discuss what their obligations are. Right. Rather than pulling up a chair, they pull out a club. As a matter of fact, David K. Johnston of the New York Times asked Terry Lemons of the IRS, why won't the IRS answer the question set forth in the petitions from the American people? Mr. Lemon's response was, the government is answering the questions through enforcement actions in the courts. This is a very chilling remark on the government's use of brute force instead of civility and logic. The federal government itself refuses to provide the American people who are coercively being subjected to this extraction of their private property without any underlying legal justification. There is no law, there is no law that requires the average American worker in the private sector to pay a direct unapportioned tax on their labor in compensation for services. There is no law. The march will stop in front of the IRS building. They are now going to serve a class action lawsuit on the IRS. Very courageous. My name is Charles Bell. I'm here to serve this complaint on behalf of the American people for the Internal Revenue Service. The complaint is accompanied by an affidavit that's um, um, under the hand of uh, Robert Schultz. The case was served. Uh, we'll call you with the case number. The case has been filed. We'll call you with the case number. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We appreciate your time. America, baby! Freedom! Today, effectively, the people have said to their servant government that, um, that our rights are not going to be any longer denied and that we're going to have answers to our petition, our legitimate lawful petitions for redress of grievances, which are guaranteed in the First Amendment to our Constitution. So once and for all, we will get an answer. On August 31st, 2005, federal judge Emmett Sullivan ruled the government does not have to answer the American people's questions, even though it is guaranteed in the First Amendment. Our courts have made a decision that government does not have to show the law that it enforces. And the press never reported on this. Have we given this judge the authority to overrule the Constitution, the very foundation of American life? I believe that in both spirit and substance, our tax system has come to be un-American. Death and taxes may be inevitable, but unjust taxes are not. The country's taxes must be fixed, and I know what to do with it. If you think you're paying too much now, just wait or I get through with it. <laughs> now, Mr. Hanley, I'd like to ask you something. Mm -hmm. What does the government do with all the money we give them in taxes? When President Reagan was elected, one of the first things that he did was appoint a blue ribbon panel of, of business people headed by Peter Grace, and is commonly referred to as the Grace Commission. And they, their job was to research uh, all the various areas of the federal government and make a report. One of the quotes from the Grace Commission is, 100% of what is collected is absorbed solely by interest on the federal debt. All individual income tax revenues are gone before one nickel is spent on the services taxpayers expect from government. If we pay the salaries of the congressmen and the senators, we're supporting them, aren't we? Well, yes. Yeah. Well, then why can't we list them as dependents and deduct them? <laughs> been brainwashed. People have been told, you know, that you need this income tax system to fund government, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, my question is, well, if that's true, how did we fund government from 1776 to 1913? The main purpose of the income tax is not to raise revenue, but to redistribute wealth and to control society. And a lot of people might say, well, gee, if there wasn't an income tax, what would happen to education? They don't understand. Uh, that education is paid for, for the most part, out of state and local taxes, your property tax. People might say, well, how are we going to build and maintain our highways? If there's no money coming in to the government, we need our highways. There is a tax on every gallon of gasoline that people buy. Proceeds from the income tax do not pay for highway construction. The amount of money that we spend 
on defense is exactly equal to the amount of corporate income tax, which is quite legal and quite constitutional.